On today's show, we're talking with Vice President of Technology for CX Tech, Frank Kobashevsky, and the Featured Artist of the Week. Plus, we'll be talking about hacking celebrity accounts, the Google Tip of the Week, and more. That's up next on EduTech Guys. EduTech Guys Radio, radio radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed under the site in this program for those of participants are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency. Hello and welcome to EduTech Guys Radio, brought to you by Southwest Arkansas Education Cooperative at Hope Public Schools, both located in Hope, Arkansas. I am David Henderson. Hey, and I'm Jeff Madlock. How you guys doing out there? Hope uh, things are going well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing well. Oh, well, How yeah. are you doing? Hey, I, we're, <laughs> How are you we're, doing? I was going to say, don't get old Joey on me. <laughs> <laughs> huh. uh, I'm not that kind of girl. Um, but, uh, no, we are back from uh, SWOW, the SWOW conference, Great conference in Hot Springs. Had a, had a really good time uh, up there. I hope, uh, hope you guys out there caught uh, bits and pieces of that. Um, we will actually... Um, cut up some of those interviews, and we'll uh, put those out available on our uh, podcast through iTunes and Google Play and several of the other places you can find us. So uh, be looking for that. Yeah, uh, we had the great interviews, and uh, like David said, they will be under the conference setting. So if you head over to www.edutechguys.com, you can take a look at the top. You'll see conferences, and drop down, you'll find all the good stuff under there, all the way from ARCOT to AESA to SWOW. And under SWOW, you'll be able to click on it, and it'll take you right to the podcast page where you can listen to the individual interviews from vendors, patrons, and uh, presenters. Yeah, it's going to be very cool. And speaking of, we actually presented a session uh, um, at the conference, and uh, our original intent, as I had mentioned before, was to um, broadcast it, but uh, we we kind of decided that we would not do that, and we would just uh, focus on things happening inside the room, but uh, it was very well received and, and I uh, hope uh, folks walked away with uh, a lot of cool stuff um, in terms of uh, knowledge and, and some ideas on how to use uh, podcasting, both audio and video in the classroom with their students for uh, project-based learning, problem-solving based learning. Problem-solving based learning. PBSLM? Yes. Yeah, I don't know. PBLM. I'm Yeah, hey, we had a really good time. I want to give a shout-out to Livestream. Who gave a shout-out to us? We used their Mevo, and it was a great – we showed the the participants it was kind of like that one more thing at the end. I showed them the Mevo, which is a one-lens multi-camera a streaming device about the size of half of a soda can. Yeah, it's very, and, uh, very cool. It's really cool, um, very inexpensive when it comes to what you can do with it and uh, the power to give your stu- your students a uh, recording, a video studio um, right there on their tablet and to use in a classroom. Yeah, and that is M-E-V-O, Mevo. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the website, unit's like three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. dollars 99 you know I mean? uh, The website is getmevo, G-E-T-M-E-V-O.com. You can take take a jump out there to the web and take a look at it. Um, really, really cool stuff. But like David said, we had a really good time uh, working with uh, those people and doing a session with them. Had a lot of good participants in that session. And uh, that's something we'd like to do for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, In fact, we had a couple of folks who were asking if, if we could come work directly with their students. Um, one of them was a GT class, another was an English class. And yeah, that's part of what we love to do. We love to come out and we work directly with the students, showing them uh, how to get started in recording, giving them some tips and some hints and working through some of those kind of initial fears and troubleshooting and getting that stuff all lined out and then turning them loose. By the same token, um, we can also do uh, professional development uh, for teachers and administrators in terms of uh, showing you how you can do uh, podcasting in your classroom, either with your students or for your students, for the teachers, for the uh, I mean, uh, for the parents, for the community. Um, just you know, getting your word out in a way that you may not have thought of before. So uh, again, you can hit us up on Twitter at Edutech Guys or um, jump over to www.edutechguys.com and fill out the form, and that'll allow you to provide more information if you like. But we'll we'll give you a holler, and, and we'll work out all the gory details. And the gory details. <laughs> it'll be fun. It, it's always uh, fun. It and is. like David said, you can catch us on social media at www.twitter.com slash edutechguys, Facebook slash edutechguys, Instagram slash edutechguys, and pretty much just go to Google, type in edutechguys, and you'll find us on the web. 
That that should have been our Halloween theme. Slash. Slash. Tech guys. <laughs> I need to think about it. We need a nice, you know, wolf howl and a scream. <laughs> Pretty much my evening. <laughs> Wolf howling oh, a scream. The wolf howling a <laughs> scream. <laughs> that is awesome. Jeff, it's oh. big fresh out. That's what happened. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so we got, um, I, I, I don't know, we ran off the rails, but today's show, <laughs> um, we got some uh, some really neat things happening today. Um, again, we're going to be talking with uh, Frank Kovashevsky, uh with CX Tech, and that is C-X-T-E-C, uh, and uh, they are on Twitter at C-X-T-E-C, uh, and then... Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the opportunity I had today, um, really by absolute just chance, I guess, if you, you know, depending on how you see things, fate, chance, coincidence, take your pick, uh, ended up having a rather um, lengthy and interesting discussion with an individual who hacks celebrity accounts. And so, yeah, we, I had, had a chance to have uh, an online chat interview uh, with the person, um, but uh, you'll uh, when you stay tuned, you'll see there's more to the reason for it than just talking about the hacking. So very cool. That's right. It's going to be a great show. Hey, we're going to drop out to a quick commercial. We'll be right back. A little more from the Edutech Guys Radio. Take your message to the world. Bring Edutech Guys to your school for fun, interactive professional development. We'll help your teachers, students, and administrator reach today's mobile audience. Students can share classroom learning. Teachers can provide outside-of-the-classroom help and instruction. And administrators can reach out to parents and the community. We'll not only show you how, but we'll have you doing it yourself before the day's end. Reach out to us on Twitter at EduTechGuys or drop us a line by visiting www.edutechguys.com. Bring EduTechGuys to your school and we'll bring your school to the world. Joining us right now, we've got Frank Kobashevsky, and he is the Vice President of Technology for CX Tech. Frank, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Jeff and David, Edutech guys. Yeah, awesome. We are, we're glad to have you. Uh, um, I, I, we've, we've not met previously, but uh, I, I know you indirectly through uh, Mike uh, Green, who um, works for you guys and is uh, my, uh, my rep for CX Tech, and, and he and I talk um, really pretty often, actually, how <laughs> I think about it. Uh, so uh, I was really glad when he said that you were interested in coming on and, and wanted to visit with us about some of the stuff that you guys are doing. So um, before I get to rambling, um, why don't you go ahead and um, tell folks about you, uh, you know, where, where you're located and what you do and that kind of good stuff, and then we'll get into the meat. Sure, sure, thanks. We, we are up in Syracuse, New York, um, Soon to be snow snow country. Uh, <laughs> yes. um, we are uh, we are about a, a 250 person organization that sells primarily uh, networking and voice products, as well as our brand of Cable Express uh, Enterprise cabling products. Uh, we've been around since 1978, so we're not new to this business, and we've got um, you know a relatively narrow. Focus from a product standpoint, but what we do, um, I think we really add quite a bit of value for our customers. And we've had since, uh, well, at least my 22 years here, uh, a special focus which are with our education vertical. Um, the value proposition we bring with our suite of products that we'll get into any way that uh, you'd like uh, really hits home with uh, the challenges that education folks are faced with. Uh, both in the K through 12 and high red. Yeah, that's cool. awesome. Hey, I, and I have to give a shout out because I know you're the social media end of Cable Express. The Cable Ninjas are awesome, man. So, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> well they're well known across the Twitterverse and and uh, and the internet. Well, we have on 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 the equal to new side, which is our brand of certified pre owned. We've got a a whole suite of army guys, army troops and oh, that's cool. tanks and helicopters. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's really yeah, awesome. We we have a very very unique culture here and we uh we're proud to share it with our customers whenever whenever we can. Yeah. You know, and and that's one of the things that customers really look for is a, is a is a personable fun atmosphere to work with. You know, that that really helps out with everything. So, uh tell us about your product line and your major 
product line when dealing with uh, with education? Absolutely. You know, the, the quickest way to sum it up is we help our customers, and especially with education, upgrade technology at the pace that makes sense to them. Uh, in other words, uh, we've realized manufacturers uh, are pushing the envelope quicker than they ever have to upgrade technology, and it often doesn't match the timing of our customers' needs. So 20, 21 years ago, we actually were the first company that had a certified brand of pre-owned networking equipment called Equal to New. And back then, it was mostly token ring product from IBM and huh. Madge and 3Com back in the day. Yeah. Uh, boy, those were fun days, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but we, you know, with the client server, you know, bang, we grew into Ethernet. Uh, we still do an awful lot of cabling. We were Cable Express back then, which... You know, some of you folks know us still as Cable Express, but uh, we kind of transitioned the company name to CX Tech, so it wasn't confusing to folks who thought we were just a cable company or a cable TV company. Oh, yeah. But the cable, yeah, that's what happened in trade shows. We kind of learned as we go. Yep. But the, the premise behind Equal New, really, the, the, uh, the research we've done, and this is just third party from IDC, is customers will purchase uh, refurbished equipment for three main reasons, cost savings, availability, and support. Um, we believe in those three tenants. However, uh, being the first to market, we've kind of kept that brand as an industry-leading brand. So we bring quality product to our customers uh, when they're ready for it. Now, the, the flip side, I think, that's unique for us is we also have trade-in programs where we'll take out product that's no longer needed or surplus product from our customers um, and then we bring it into a 70,000 square foot facility here in Syracuse. Uh, we're ISO certified, so we put it through a very stringent testing process and then resell that product with a lifetime, a full lifetime warranty. So do you, do you see a lot of, so, you know, let's say, I, you know, a district comes to you and buys a thousand Chromebooks. Um, do you see them purchasing a lot of, of your um, ISO refurbished networking hardware and stuff to go along with that? Is it kind of an equal sale, or do you sell more of one or the other? We actually, that's a great question. We we um we aren't in the Chromebook business. However, yeah. if I can spin it kind of to the the networking and voice business, uh -huh. uh, we have customers that buy an awful lot of switching and you know either chassis based or standalone switching as well as uh, phones, desktop phones. Um, you, you know, you might be aware in the technology world that. VoIP was such a just a leading edge major transition technology disruption years ago, and uh, my opinion, uh, quite frankly, is it's taken a back seat to the things that matter most to companies like security and mobility, which is face you know challenges facing our certainly our education space. Uh, so our our traditional phone business, both digital, analog, and even older VoIP phones, has been on the rise lately. Um, well, um, with the, uh, with the restructuring of the way E-rate funds are, uh, doled out these days, uh, I would venture that, um, especially on the, on the VoIP side, that that would probably be one of the reasons why that would be kind of on the upswing. I mean, would you say, is that something you've kind of noticed, especially like last year and then coming into this year as people are starting to put their uh, 470s and, and those kinds of things together that, that using that category two money is really where you're starting to see the focus of things, especially in terms of VoIP? Without a doubt, David. We actually have uh, on our staff an E-rate specialist who is on calls with the E-rate folks that quite frankly knows, not to toot our horn here, but knows the in, in, ins and outs of E-rate um, probably better than anybody Mm -hmm. Did we lose you? That's another oh. uh, few folks from our, our company out at SEPTA right now in California at the education show. Cool. Yeah. Talking just about that. Yep. So you know, I noticed that you guys you guys do 3Com, AdTran, Aruba, Cisco, HP, Fortinet. You pretty much <laughs> got the, the whole gamut covered there. We, we do. We do. But, you know, it's not uh, – 
the monkey on the table and in the room is Cisco. So, uh, you know, with 80-something percent of the market share that they play in, uh, Cisco is a big piece of our business. But, you know, just to get back before I lose track with the E-rate question, yeah, uh, we do an awful lot of E-rate business and help our customers through that. But on the flip side, uh, many of our education customers still are, are of the belief they can't sell their surplus if they purchased it with E-rate funding. And the fact is, if it's over five years old, you, they have the right to sell that product. So then we can craft a, a trade-in value via either credit on account that they can use within their district or, uh, you know, pay via check uh, for product that's surplused. Wow. Yeah. Can, can they? Can you work a deal? So let's say you know they they're ready to upgrade their three com and they get rid of their five year old three com. Um, could they use that money to pay their actual uh, cost? You know, if if they they are a ninety percent school, could they use that to pay their ten percent that they might owe on it as a district? Yeah, I mean that that whatever they do with that money is, is fair so game. It's fair it's game. Fair. That's really cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep, and we've done deals before, Jeff, where there's no money that's traded hands. So at the timing, if the timing is right and you take E-rate out of the game, you know, somebody needs some access, Aruba, Aruba access points, um, and they're, they've got some older Cisco access points or even Cisco 7900 series IP phones, we can work even trades out where there's actually no money that trades hands whatsoever. So oh. it's kind of a, a, a win-win. Yeah, that does sound like a win-win. Mm -hmm. That's 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 a beautiful service for for educational industry. There, we had a you know un unrelated to the E-rate business, but we had a school just north of here that uh, used the funds that we gave them for their surplus equipment to put a new roof on their building. So I mean, we even go that far as to yeah. kind of show off how how folks can use the dollars that they think for or that they have just for stranded assets under their desk or in their closets. Well, and I think that's a very key point. You know, how many districts have entire, uh, you know, closets or storage buildings or, you know, just rooms scattered throughout the district that are full of old networking equipment that still actually has value but just not being used anymore? And, you know, here you guys, you know, could swallow that up and and then ultimately, like you said, you know, give them a check or if they need new equipment or you know, whatever they need to do with that particular uh, return on their used equipment, and it frees up the space that all that stuff is taking up. Yep, and then if you throw a, a, an angle on it that it's the, it's the number one um, environmentally sensitive thing to do is to reuse the product because that means new product from OEMs does not have to be remanufactured for its place. You basically have a new home for it for a customer that's, you know, a generation or two behind in their product. It's it's a win for them as well. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, like you said, you guys turn around and recertify that, and then you sell that to a district who doesn't necessarily want new equipment um, but would still like some of the higher-end equipment that may be a little older at a much better price, and it's just, you know, recircling, recirculating through the system uh, you know, just keep it, you know, feeds itself and then back into itself. And uh, it just, that, that's very cool. Yep. Yep. The current trend, though, um, if I could switch gears for a second for yeah. saving education facilities money, uh, is utilizing uh, third party maintenance. So maintenance costs are going through the roof these days. And a lot of our customers just simply can't afford uh, the rising costs, especially when products end of life or end of support for manufacturers. The typical instance in the in the Cisco world, and I'll speak to that because of the the market share I mentioned before, is that they'll they'll begin raising maintenance prices after or as they try to sunset the product, really to kind of force upgrades because that's what OEMs really have to do. Sure. Uh, really, at that point, you know, we we would recommend annual maintenance kind of assessments to say, okay, there's some. There's some switches that are in the closets that are on, on well, in Cisco's case, SmartNet, that really don't any longer have available software upgrades or patches. Um, and, and there are companies out there, we happen to be one of them, but, you know, this isn't a sales call, so there are other ones out there as well that 
offer um, third-party maintenance in terms of guaranteed next business day replacement. Uh, and then we take it one step further and try to blend it with hot swappable spares as well, since you know we can certify the product's been tested. We throw one right next to the stack that's working. Uh, if a uh, switch goes bad, if you've got one to swap in and swap out or a module for a chassis, for instance, or phones, um, it really lowers the OPEX um, dramatically from just straight OEM maintenance. Yeah, well, and that's phenomenal that that's something that you guys offer, uh, you know, for that very reason, you know, if the, especially, you know, if you have a core switch that goes down at a school network, you're talking about student data, you're talking about financial systems, you know, all those different things that now can't be done until that, until that gets up and running again. If they could have a hot swappable piece of equipment just waiting there, it goes down, you know, the first one goes down, you immediately get things, you know, configured and, and swapped over and, and, you know, heck, it could very well be in that particular scenario. They've already got it configured. It's just a matter of plugging in and then boom, you know, yeah, they were down for, you know, five, 10 minutes or whatever it took just, you know, long enough to get everything switched over and they're back up and running again. That's right. And yeah. then, and it's actually a, uh, a, a shout out to our, our, our sales organization here, which does a really good job on um, selling to a healthcare vertical as well. Same sort of characteristics there when you've got a chassis running, you know, a wing of a hospital and, and that four hour response time from an OEM maintenance is three hours and 59 minutes too long for a wing to be down. So, well, yeah, exactly. We position that. That's really, so Frank, other services you guys provide besides maintenance, um, can you let us know what they are? Cause I know you guys provide a lot of other services just besides the maintenance alone. Well, we do. Um, I, I think the, the big ones really are the, the certified pre-owned products that are third-party maintenance, our trade-in programs, um, our expertise and help through the E-rate um, kind of web that's spun out there. Uh, and, we, and we do offer um, partnered services from an installation. We offer configuration services here on site. So folks could tell us what they want configured. We could have it done here at our facility, which is Nice. Uh, ISO certified and then ship it out so it's ready for plug and play. Yeah, that's nice. That comes in real handy for education because, you know, so much of education is moving to wireless. So you guys can actually, for the, for some smaller schools that might not have the tech hands on, on staff, they can actually get you guys to pre-configure it before it ever gets there for them. That's that's really handy for you. Absolutely. Cool. So uh, let's talk life cycle management. You guys also make sure you keep up with everything and, and, and keep us on our toes because, I can tell you, I've got some switches still sitting out there. That it's time for them to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff, you and everybody that's probably on this podcast right now. Right. <laughs> it happens, and I always just forget. You know, we, we know we keep our inventory up, but you know, life cycle is is a hard thing when you're you know we're dealing with thousands of one to one devices and miles of networking and you know different sites and campuses. Just like the healthcare industry or the financial industry, right? And you know, life cycle management is one of those things that would we love to have taken off of our plate. Yep. And by the way, it's probably not anywhere near the top of your priority list when you're responsible for making sure your students have connectivity and your teachers have uh, connectivity. That's right. You know, it's the last thing we think of, but it's one of the first things that catches us in the long run, in in the rear. You know, when, right. it's, when it's time for something to go out, you know, or we realize that hey, yep. we should have replaced that three years ago. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Um, hey, other products. Let's talk about a hot topic here. Uh, VOIP voice is a really hot topic right now. And uh, so, uh, what's the hot what what's the hot stuff right now on your end for for VOIP? Quite frankly, it's the uh, it's the movement of folks either migrating away from uh, the 3Com NBX VCX product set because HP is not supporting that. Uh, or it's folks going upstream in Shortel. Shortel is a pretty good product offering for us on VoIP. Um, but we do do an awful lot of, um, it, it, as I mentioned, that the desktop phones and VoIP phones are traditionally almost like reorder items. I know we as a company, if we were an end user, we had we have probably 25 or 30 of these Cisco 7900 series phones downstairs where we just keep a, a min max and reorder more. So yeah. it's uh it's 
a very good thing to have handy um, and a cost, a very good cost savings opportunity. Well, and it's a great cost savings for education too, because um, if, if I need a phone for, you know, the gym area and some high traffic areas that the phone's going to get a lot of, you know, a use out of, it's a lot better for me to buy a fully ISO refurbished device than spend the money on a new one. Mm-hmm. Couldn't agree more. Yep. If there's one, there was one study that no jitter reported on that uh, said they, they slowly took everything off a person's desktop and had no complaints except for when they took that desk phone off of it. Mm-hmm. So that phone, no matter what you say, is still one of those things people like to pick up. They want the quality of service, which, you know, VoIP has come a long ways. Um, but, you know, the feature and functionality is is okay, but they really just want dial tone right now. And as I mentioned, the other trends going on that are true business driving trends like storage and the cloud or, or mobility um, security, you know, that's where people are putting their money. Yeah. Yeah. So can we talk data center also? You guys for data center, that's mostly cabling, fiber, jumpers, panels, towers, cords, power distribution. That's that kind of stuff, isn't it? It, it is. Um, kind of one step up from that, though, the, the high end, uh, you know, the, the, the Cornings of the world, if folks are familiar with the high end Corning uh, fiber systems, we, we have a Cable Express branded um, port replication system that we, um, we use for large, large data centers. Um, you know, the, the hyper connected folks out there that you see and have search engines and Mm. They have oh, our yeah. stuff in their data center. That's well. So you That's guys, awesome. You guys can handle a, a school district of 500 or a Fortune 500, pretty much. Right, or 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 a top 10 uh, ISP company mm-hmm. that's in the world has our enterprise class replication system in their data center. That's pretty amazing. That is. That's awesome. <laughs> See, I've, I've learned a lot today already. So um, <laughs> um, let's talk about let's talk about. Uh, resources, uh, where they can find you, what they, how they can get in touch with you, um, what resources you guys have available on the web, and uh, all that kind of good stuff. Sure, sure. Great question. Uh, you know, the third, the third tenant I mentioned with uh, folks interested in pre-owned is support. Um, really, really important for us is the layers of support from our support teams. Like, David, you mentioned Michael Green. Um, mm-hmm. He's on our education team, but He's supported with a regional sales manager who eats, sleeps, and breathes education issues. Yeah. Uh, and then they are supported by a product team, uh, which is part of my staff that can give you the the kind of not too technical, but the product migration type paths. Yeah. So from an internal support, that's what we've got. I mean, certainly cxtech.com uh, or Cable Express with one e in the middle dot com, two great resource sites. Uh, both sites have uh, short little YouTube videos of capabilities which give a breadth of products, both on the Equal to New side and the Cable Express side. Um, and let's see, we've got this, the Twitter hashtag that you mentioned, um, both on CX Tech and Cable Express. Um, and then uh, we're certainly on LinkedIn as well. But uh, but I'm, I'm I'm open for other future casts if you guys have you know drilled down specific topics. Cool. And yeah. you will absolutely see us at next year's uh, show that you just went to in Hot Springs for sure. Awesome. Well, That's we look awesome. forward to that, and and hopefully um, you guys will be able to you know take take a breath from uh, visiting with all the folks there and be able to come up and and visit with us and uh, hang out for a little bit, and we can we can chat in person as well. That'd be cool. Absolutely. Hey, Frank, uh, we, we always like to give all of our guests one last uh, elevator pitch, uh, 45 seconds to, you know, wrap everything up and tell us the most important values of their company or their service or product. And so um, you're up. We're in the elevator, and you're giving us the pitch. Boy, it doesn't get better than a shout-out to our staff that we've got here. The, the people and the culture are what are, makes our company. You can go any place to buy products and boxes and widgets, Um We've got a reputation that's second to none with our ISO certification, um, ESD production floor and a refurb center, and a dedication to really providing extreme customer service, which keeps our customers coming back over 96% of the time. 
from a repeat standpoint. So if you take that whole package that I already talked about together and, and think about the trade-in opportunities that folks have and marry it with the cost savings of uh, third-party maintenance and certified pre-owned equipment that we stand behind, it's a real winning combination, guys. Awesome. That was awesome. Hey, Frank, we want to thank you for being on the show, and we will reach back out again. And if uh, you think of anything you ever want to share with us, please reach back out to us, and we'll get you back on another podcast. I will. Thank you, EduTech guys. <laughs> thank awesome. you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Okay, see you. Bye. Bye. -bye. So, hey, uh, we're going to jump out to a quick song, Song of the Week. This is one of our bands we've only actually featured maybe on here once or twice. We've used them at, at conference on a few occasions. We really enjoy them. They're a, a great group. This is Gooseneck with Ricochet. <laughs> share a passion for education and technology be our guest on an upcoming show it's easy just reach out to us on twitter at edutech guys we'd love to talk to you about education technology and what you're doing to help make a difference that's at edutech guys on twitter come be our guest we'd love to have you hey welcome back to the show <laughs> i was pretty excited there could you tell I, I didn't know what you were doing I, I got really excited. Okay. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. You know why? You know why we're excited? Why? 
We're so excited, and we just can't <laughs> hide it. No, you know why? Because we are going to be at AESA. That's the Association of Education Service Agencies, November 30th through December 3rd, providing live conference coverage in Savannah, Georgia. Wow, I'm excited about that one. And then, right after Christmas, coming up at Petsy in Orlando, Florida, Future yeah. of Education Technology Conference, we have... January 24th through the 26th, 27th, 27th, yeah. January 24th through the 27th. Yeah. Uh, that's where we'll be. And uh, you don't want to miss us there. Yeah, exactly. And um, we, we actually, next week, we're actually going to feature uh, an interview uh, that we had with uh, several folks uh, who are taking part uh, in FETSI. Um, and so we're going to have, we're going to feature that interview next week on the show. So that's going to be very, very cool. So be sure to catch us, and of course, uh, you can keep up with what we're doing at edutechguys.com, uh, and if you go to the uh, conferences page, uh, you'll see where we're going to be, what we're doing, what we're up to, and if you have an event or know someone who is hosting an event and you want some fun, cool, live coverage of your conference, be sure to reach out to us again on Twitter at edutechguys or hit up the webpage, edutechguys.com, and fill out the uh, contact form and we'll be in touch for sure. Yeah. Hey, so, you know, uh, David had a really interesting thing happen to him today. I did. Um, and, uh, <laughs> did you like that intro? <laughs> like, there you That's go. my lead off. There, you. there you go. Um, yeah. So I, I had, I had tweet deck. I, I like to use tweet deck. It lets me monitor multiple things that are happening on happening on Twitter at one time. And that's what we use uh, to send out a lot of the posts and, and tweets that we, uh, put out and share out with you guys. Um, and so I had, I had tweet deck open and, and I'm just kind of watching it go by. And, um, I happen to be, I, I happen to follow Dave, uh, Collier, Collier, I don't Dave know. Collier. Collier. All right. Uh, you know, uncle Joey from Fuller house, from full house, Fuller house, all that stuff. And so, uh, I, I, he, his account just kind of streamed by and it just said something along the lines of, uh, hey, if you are a news reporter, I've got some important information I'd like to share. Please direct message me. Well, I thought, okay, this seems a little weird, but sure, why not? You know, he posts some interesting stuff out there. And so I, I reached out and it turns out that uh, very quickly into the conversation um, that I was well aware um, or made aware, all of the above, uh, that I was chatting with someone who had actually hacked his account and was tweeting as him. Uh, and so we got to talking for a little bit, and um, we uh, basically what the person wanted was an interview, wanted to talk about how they hack celebrity accounts and then also what people can do uh, in order to help prevent getting hacked. And I think that is really the part that, uh, that, that appealed to me the most, uh, you know, at, at, at EduTech guys, well, okay. <laughs> at EduTech guys, um, you know, we're, we're all about education and technology and trying to help educate everyone who's listening to us in some form or fashion, whether it's Google tip of the week or sharing, like we did earlier, uh, some of the services that a particular uh, company may offer or an organization uh, shares with their folks. And so um, uh, I, I tweeted it out before, and, and we'll tweet it out again, the link to the actual blog post that I created for this. But uh, I, I had the opportunity to talk with uh, a person who goes by the handle Mr. Chickry. And, um, yeah, Chickry. I was making sure I, I was saying that right. Uh, and essentially, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, there are websites uh, out there that are not very hard to find that uh, you can actually pay money and get into the website, and it will show you essentially any database of information that has been hacked. In this particular case, uh, he was um, using information from the MySpace account hack from 2013. And so that's, to me, that was one of the key things that stuck out, right? This is the hack from 2013. And he was using information from that long ago to access celebrity accounts because the celebrities are not updating or changing their password. And so the same password they were using back then still works today. Yeah. And so um, uh, it's, it's a very interesting conversation. I'm not going to get into it all here. You can, you can read it online. We'll, we'll tweet out uh, a link to it. Um, but 
again, turning the tables a little bit, um, I was very curious about what his take was on how people can uh, prevent this from happening. And of course, the number one suggestion is change your password, right? You know, if your password is the same one you've been using since time began, holy cow, change your password. Yeah. Um, but really, uh, his suggestion was even changing it once a month uh, in that given data breaches and, and how how much information um, really ends up in uh, the wrong hands, uh, you know, how quickly that seems to happen more and more then uh, changing your password once a month uh, is, you know, a good way to go. Uh, the other thing that he strongly recommended was uh, two-form, uh, two-factor authentication. Uh, if, and that may be a big, long, fancy term for something that you are probably already using uh, anyhow. And that is two-form, two two-factor, I don't know why I keep saying two-form, uh, two-factor authorization is where, when you set up an account, you go to log in somewhere and it asks you for your phone number or an alternate email address, then that is the two factor part of that. So when you go to set your, when you ask to reset your password, yes, you're going to get an email that says, uh, you know, Hey, you know, we understand you want to reset your password, but you could also get a text that says, by the way, you're going to have to enter this code. And then that way it comes to your phone that you have, right? Uh, and so that's where that two factor comes in. Now, the catch is if your two factor happens to be an email address that has been hacked, well, then the hacker already has access to that and boom, they're good to go. Um, he spent a lot of time talking about and, and showing, uh, and I've got pictures that, that he sent uh, during this conversation where um, he was able to get into actor Tom Hiddleston's Instagram account. Um, because of the way Instagram verified um, account information. Uh, essentially, you had to send, you have to send, and I don't know if it's still this way or not, but essentially you send a picture of yourself holding a piece of paper that has your account information on it, um, such as a, a phone number and your username. Well, once again, with a hacked database, it doesn't take long to put the pieces together and go on the internet and do a search and find a particular celebrity holding up a blank sign and, you know, three seconds in Photoshop later, and boom, you've got all the authorization uh, that you need to get into that account. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's pretty scary, uh, you know, in some regards, but it is also, hopefully, it's also very eye-opening. Um, and, and then one last thing I'm going to bring up real quick, and then I'll shut up about this, and you guys can, again, you can read it online. Um, but <laughs> one of the other things he talked about was just because you change your password in Twitter, you think you're all good and, and everything is fine. And actually, it's not. Um, in Twitter, in Facebook, uh, uh, especially in anywhere where you have an app that has connected to another site. So, for example, um, if I have, if I have, well, TweetDeck is a, is a decent example, but that's already a Twitter thing. So, let's say um, I, I've got IFTTT, right? If this, then that dot com. And I've got it tied to my Twitter account. Well, if somebody happens to hack into my if this then then account and I change my Twitter password, well, if they're still connected, they can still get in. You have to actually go into a section in one of the settings for Facebook, for Twitter, and disconnect those apps, those programs, until you get those passwords reset, and then you can connect everybody back together. So very, very interesting conversation. I have to say, uh, um, you know, I, I mean, I can't possibly purport to know how old this individual was. Um, but uh, I, I would say they were pretty well versed in, in what they were doing. And I found it, it was almost like ethical hacking in a weird sort of way. I mean, it was just, you know, here he was hacking it. And I will tell you, this person is notorious for doing not so eth 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 ethical things with certain accounts. <laughs> um, yeah, and has been in the news lately. Uh, and in fact, that was one of the things he shared with me. Um, but uh, I thought it was very admirable, for lack of a better word, uh, that that this, this, this was his purpose, was to say, yes, I'm in, you know, I'm in Uncle Joey's Twitter account, and I could do all kinds of crazy things, but really what I want to do is tell you how to fix how it. How to fix it, yeah. So, uh, a white hat. White hat. I want to be a white hat. Yeah. I want to do a good thing. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Yeah, thanks a million for that. And thanks, Mr., is it Chickory? Chickory. Chickory. 
Yeah, thanks for reaching out to David, and thanks for letting us know, because that's how we find out. Exactly. That's the thing that needs to be shared across the board, in uh, especially in digital education for the students. Yes. And for our teachers. Exactly. And for everybody. Right. it's one of those cool things. Yep. Hey, uh, we're going to wrap up real quick, but first, what Google, time is it? Google tip of the week. Sorry, I missed my cue. <laughs> I know. Yeah, no. Google tip of the week time. Uh, hey, this week's Google tip of the week is part of the G Suite thing. Um, today, the last few days, Google's been rolling out a new site. And now they have officially rolled it out to everyone. Yeah. If you have a Google Suite, G Suite. Um, so that's a really big one. Uh, I'll let David take it and he can talk a little bit about it. Well, essentially what they're doing is they're revamping sites. If you're familiar with Google Sites, especially what they're now calling classic Google Sites, uh, that is where you could have your own website hosted through Google. Um, the original, the, the classic version, as they call it now, was very well, rudimentary and clunky and ugly. I mean, let's just paint the picture the way it is. And with the relaunch, uh, it is actually much more user-friendly. You can drag and drop pieces into place. If I want to put a picture in, I, I bring in the picture and I can I can move it where I want it to go. If I want to put a, a section of text in there, I can bring in a section of text. It's very reminiscent of sites such as Weebly, such as Wix, uh, in terms of dragging and dropping the, the layout, where you want things, how you want it to look. And so that is being rolled out to G Suite users uh, across the board. Um, a lot of folks were doing kind of the beta testing of that, and now it's been officially launched um, really as of today. <laughs> so Wait. hot off the press. So, hey, hit your Google admin, drop into the app section, uh, drop into G Suite, and you'll be able to turn it on. It is turned on automatically. It is. For choice. G Suite users, if you've been using the old site piece, you need to do a little configuration there, a little move over. But go ahead and check it out on Google. Just look up Google Sites, and you'll probably find everything that you need. There you go. Awesome. That's awesome. the Google tip of the week. Hey, we want to thank uh, Frank for coming on the show today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for, for being here. Oh, and sorry. Talk. I wasn't in my notes. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. I want to thank Frank from CX Tech. Yeah. Kobyshevsky. Kobyshevsky. Thank you. There you go. I've got a lot of names in my brain. So um, when I think you're talking about CX Tech, hey, if you're out there and you'd like to talk with us and chat with us on the EduTech Guys podcast every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central, um, just head over to www.edutechguys.com. Drop down to the bottom of the page and you can fill out something right there. Or hit us up on Twitter or Facebook and just hit us up there. Absolutely. Best way to get in touch with us. Also, you can email Jeff at edutechguys.com or David at edutechguys.com. Tom, it's been a wonderful show. I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. We'll talk to you next time. You've been listening to EduTech Guys Radio, radio radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed on the site and this program for those who participants are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency.